Welcome to SwearNet Sports. Sports news, no bullshit. I'm your host, Bernard Robichaud. Let's look back in the world of sports, starting with the NHL. Prime Minister Stephen Harper's book, A Great Game, a look back on the history of professional hockey apparently took him nine years to finish. I guess it takes that long to write something when you're too busy dealing with Senate scandals. Nine years is a long time. It only took him a couple of years to put the country in the fucking shitter. Sources say this book will help with his approval rating, though, by making Canadians believe he shares a common interest with them. It's November, and you know what that means. Movember is back, and many of the players in the NHL are growing mustaches to support men's health. <laughs> Guys, if you're that fucking serious about men's health, stop hitting each other in the fucking head at full speed. I'm looking at you, John Scott. Yes, I am, brother. Hard checks may break your bones, but in the case of Oilers coach Dallas Eakins, names may actually hurt him after an incident while walking his daughter to school. Eakins tells a story. I'm walking my daughter to school yesterday, and I get one kid yelling to everybody, Hey, that's the head coach of the Edmonton Oilers. And my five-year-old daughter gets real excited because, oh, yeah, that's my daddy. And then I get another kid yelling, You suck! And then the look on my daughter's face is one of something completely different. Dallas, Dallas, Dallas. It might be tough, but at least she finally knows what we've all known for a fucking month. I mean, if you're if the Oilers won a game, you wouldn't have to worry about intelligent five-year-olds calling it like it is. Win a game and shut those little pricks up. Now, there's been a lot of talk lately on the rules of fighting in hockey, especially after the Emery Holtby goalie fight. I say fight loosely because another, anybody who saw the fight knows it wasn't a fight at all. It was a total fucking pummeling. Hope he was like, I don't want none of this. I'm good. And Emery's response was, welcome to the Thunderdome, bitch. As he pummeled the crap out of Hopi. I mean, the big discussion is really, is why the fuck Emery wasn't sus suspended. But based on the five pages of double talk in the NHL rulebook, no direct ruling could be made against Emery. Personally, I think they should take a closer look at this because goalie fighting could be made into a great new game show where contestants strap on goalie equipment, skate 60 meters at top speed, pummel the shit out of a dummy for 30 seconds, and are pulled off by two judges who then assess points based on the beating. I mean, guys, come on. If not a game show, at least make it part of the all-star skills competition. In PGA news... Tiger Woods made headlines with a publicity stunt to kick off the inaugural Turkish Open, hitting golf balls from Europe to Asia across the Bosporus Bridge for $3 million. Making those balls the most expensive fucking balls hit away in the history of the game. But $3 million, Tiger, can buy you a lot of Turkish hash, bro. There are worse publicity stunts. With Turkish uh, lenient prostitution laws, they could have had Tiger fuck his way across the bridge. There's a new tourism marketing strategy. The Turkish golf and spa getaway. Fire your balls down the bridge in the morning, then go balls deep in a Turkish brothel at night. In Major League Baseball, the World Series recently wrapped up and the Red Sox finally told that fucking Fenway ghost to go fuck itself, winning at home for the first time since 1918. Now, it must be a pretty great feeling to win a championship after almost 100 years in front of the hometown crowd that shit on you the whole fucking season. And one of the standouts was pitcher John Lackey, who received a rousing chant of appreciation when he was relieved in the seventh inning, marking the only time in the history of baseball where a bunch of people chanting Lackey, Lackey, Lackey was actually a good thing. Alex Rodriguez made the news again as sources in the Major League Baseball's drug testing program confirmed that A-Rod failed a drug stimulant test in 2006. According to many seen leaving his New York condo, sources confirmed it wasn't Cialis. I guess that's why they call him A-Rod. A-Rod is reportedly upset with Commissioner Bud Selig now for turning his legacy into another trophy on Selig's mantelpiece. I'd be careful, Bud. If A-Rod rocks a boner this holiday season, you may have a new place to hang your Christmas stockings. In football news, Florida Gators offensive tackle Tyler Moore will be sitting out the rest of the season after breaking his arm. The injury is not football related. He broke it falling off his scooter when he lost control driving it on a wet sidewalk. Now this marks the second such injury in college football this year as Louisville's Lorenzo Malden had a similar accident on a moped before the season began. 
Moore is six foot five, three hundred and twenty fucking pounds. Malden is six four, two forty three. And based on the sliding scale, the next player will probably be about six one, two ten, falling off a tricycle. I mean, thank God Tyler chose a vehicle with two wheels. When you're that fucking big on one of those bikes, you look like you shit a fucking wheel and forgot to wipe your ass. It's too bad neither player bought the unicycles, but I guess no one really wants the record for longest skid mark. <laughs> Tyler's lucky he wasn't driving by a neighborhood birthday party at the time of the accident, beaten to death by a swarm of kids mistaking him as a half-open pinata. Finally, in NBA news, Allen Iverson officially retired from basketball. He's not talking about practice. I ain't not talking about practice. He's not talking about, I mean, he's not talking about practice. He's talking about retirement. Now, what the fuck's he going to do for money? I, for one, will miss Allen Iverson. He was one of the NBA's most explosive players, and there was never a dull moment when he was on the court. Now all we have left is meta world peace, or whatever the fuck a meta is. That's all this week from Swearnet Sports. Check back with us for more sports, player interviews, and on-location reports from our field correspondent, former independent wrestler Chet the Net Williams. Until then... This is Bernard Robichaud saying, we might not be very sportsmanlike, but when I feel like a fucking sportsman, I'll jog to a fucking sports bar.